you can now chain Siri requests together so you don't have to reactivate it every time you need to ask it something. Hey, it's Chris. Apple's CarPlay is really great right out of the box, but it can be a lot better if you take the time to personalize it. If you think about it, the majority of the CarPlay experience really comes down to maps, messaging, and music. So we're really gonna hit those first, and then we'll get into some tips towards the end of the video as well. What's new with CarPlay? Even while GM plans on ditching Apple CarPlay, Mercedes is integrating Apple Music's spatial audio for native immersive sound, and Porsche is updating its CarPlay support to let drivers control vehicle functions like climate control. And then there's Tesla, which instead of just adopting CarPlay, is integrating AirPlay for high quality audio and potentially video streaming. So let's start off by talking about messages. There's a cool customization that you can do as part of your driving focus mode, which controls who can contact you while you're driving. There's an automatic message that will get sent out to people who try to contact you. It says, I'm driving with driving focus turned on. I'll see your message when I've arrived at my destination. Now in CarPlay settings on your iPhone, you can stick your own message in there. Something like, right now I'm playing real world Mario Kart, but I'll text you when I've crossed the finish line. I'm busy arguing with my GPS. We'll text once we've settled our differences. But I gotta say, I'm really liking the new messaging interface that came along with iOS 17. It's centered, we got bigger buttons, which are easier to press, just looks better. But now there's also a small button at the top right of the message pop up, which will let you mute notifications or announcements from particular conversations. A lot of people don't realize that it's super easy to share your ETA with people now, you can do it with Siri, which is the easiest way. Just say, Siri, share my ETA with whoever. I know a lot of people out there really live for dark mode on their Mac or their iPad, their iPhone. And now if you want to, you can enable dark mode on your CarPlay all the time. So if you go into settings and appearance, you can change it there to better reflect your aesthetic preference. I know a lot of people just like that darker maps look all day, not just when they're going through a tunnel so they're not blinded by the console, you know, they just prefer it. And now you can enable that full time, all the time, even when it's not dark outside. Now, if you drive an electric, there's a nice little update for EV owners. Maps now lets you easily search for a Tesla or EV charger that's nearby. And not only that, but in certain situations, you can also see the availability of chargers that are available because there's nothing worse than showing up when you're almost out of range and everything's taken already. One feature a lot of people don't realize they can take advantage of when it comes to maps is that whenever you park somewhere and you disconnect from CarPlay, it remembers where you parked in your Apple Maps app on your iPhone. So when you're done doing whatever you do and you can't remember where you parked, just open up Maps on your phone, search for a parked car, and boom, it's like you're a turkey the day after Thanksgiving. Instant relief. Certain people out there are gonna be really excited about the new offline Maps feature. So if you're gonna be in a spot where you know the internet is iffy, or if you just wanna be extra prepared. You can go into Maps on your iPhone, tap on your avatar, your profile, and then offline maps, and then you can download a map. Just put in a city, it'll give you a box where you can adjust how much of that city you wanna encompass. Get it downloaded, download several if you need to, and then you're gonna feel much more prepared for that next camping adventure or road trip. You're gonna be internet independent and ready for whatever the road has to throw at you. Now, it might've creeped you out the first time you saw it in action, but Siri does actually do a pretty good job of learning where you like to go frequently, and then it saves those as favorites. But you can actually manually save favorites as well. So when you're in Maps on your iPhone, just add a location to your favorites there. Really quick, super simple. Believe it or not, when I'm out driving, I have actually found some ways to be more productive, whether that's using Siri to make reminders or add calendar events to my calendar or to actually take notes via Siri. That works great too. And if you'd like to unlock unlimited productivity in your own life so you can have less stress, boost your income, and save a bunch of time, then check out my course, Learning to Be Productive, which I'll link up below so you can turbocharge your own efficiency. All right, let's move on to music. When I'm cruising around, if I'm not listening to a podcast, I got the Andy Minio on, maybe some classical, maybe some wombats, depends on the mood. But I'll tell you what's made it better is turning on crossfade in Apple Music so I can get those smooth transitions in between tracks. Feels a lot more immersive. To set it up, you just enable this on your iPhone. Those settings will transfer over into CarPlay. So head over to your iPhone settings, look for Apple Music, and flip on that crossfade button. I think what a lot of people consider the most exciting, biggest update to hit CarPlay in iOS 17 here is the new SharePlay feature coming to Apple Music, which lets not just one person be in control of the tunes, but anybody in the car with an iPhone. So if you hit that SharePlay icon, you're gonna end up with a QR code. 
Now, if you're in something like a Suburban and you got people in the way, way back who want to access that code, you can make it a little easier on them by just tapping on it. It's going to enlarge. Also, I should point out if you're riding along in the car and you fire up Apple Music, you'll notice there's some new icons down at the bottom and you can get in on the share play action using that icon on your iPhone as well. So while not everyone can drive the car, everyone gets a shot at driving the beat. Now, if you prefer a more minimalistic vibe while you're driving and you don't want to show the album art, you don't have to. You can go into the settings and actually turn that off because maybe it's a personal preference thing or maybe there's some album artwork that either doesn't deserve to be shown or could like ruin the song for you. I've had that before, it's weird. Or maybe there's some younger eyes in the back that you don't want seeing certain things. Now, in the past, I've made some popular CarPlay videos, but it's been a while since I dropped some tips. Let me start by saying you don't have to put up with annoying notifications from particular apps. One of those being Find My. Find My is great, helps you locate stuff that you might have lost or not leave something behind. But if you're like me, it's really annoying to get a notification every time you leave the house and you're like a minute down the road and it's like you forgot your iPad or if you got whatever device back at the house. And what really bugs me is sometimes you think you've added your house or your office as an accepted location where it's not gonna bug you when you leave, but it still does for whatever reason. Maybe you didn't get all 100 Apple devices that you have, right? But what I'm driving at is you can go into settings and turn off certain app notifications for CarPlay. So settings, notifications, find the app, and then just turn off show and CarPlay. Sometimes you wanna be uninterrupted when you're driving. You know, you actually wanna drive. You don't want the extra baggage of being hit with all these different notifications so that even when you're in the car, you can't get away from your digital life. I just wanna make sure and point out that you're not saying an extra hey in front of the name of Apple's digital assistant. You don't have to say hey anymore as long as you have iOS 17 or later installed. Not necessarily world changing, but still kind of nice. But what's really great is that you can now chain Siri requests together so you don't have to reactivate it every time you need to ask it something. So bring it up once, interact with it, and continue to interact with it until you're done. Something else that's pretty cool is that you're no longer stuck with the default wallpaper option for CarPlay. There's now several that you can choose from. So pop into the settings there. You'll see some light ones, some dark ones. You can have it set to auto, light, or dark. You can personalize it, you can match the aesthetics to your mood, and you'll notice they're very iOS-like. So if you want it to look like the background of your iPhone, for instance, you can get that going on. Unfortunately, you can't load in your own customized wallpapers yet. But if you wanna spice things up on your other devices, you should definitely check out our wallpaper store at aiartwalls.com, or I'll link it up down below for easy access. Always feels good to customize things, get it tweaked and tuned just how you like it. For instance, being able to tweak and tune how the icons appear on your CarPlay screen. A lot of people don't realize that you can rearrange those or move stuff onto the second screen, but you have to do it on your iPhone. So on your iPhone, go to settings, CarPlay, apps, and then there's an option to rearrange those. And there's also an option there to reset things back to the default if you really mess things up. I should just note, there's a brand new CarPlay experience coming soon, which is gonna completely take over every screen on your car. Are all cars gonna get this? Probably not older cars, something that's gonna roll out in new cars. Starting with the Lincoln Nautilus, it looks like. Apple previewed this with iOS 16, and we were told that we were gonna see this towards the end of 2023, so time will tell. All I can say is it looks amazing, and not only will it control things that are siphoned in from your phone, but it will actually let you control things on the car itself. For instance, the air conditioning. Does this eventually lead to maybe an actual Apple car? Does Project Titan actually come to life sometime in the next couple of years? The answer is, I don't know. But it does look like Apple's branching out here beyond just the expected. All right, that's it for this video. The last thing that I need you to do is check out our newsletter. Why do I need you to do it? It's for your own good. It has a super high open rate for a reason. You're gonna have to subscribe so you can figure it out. But if you like Apple stuff, hardware, software, tips, tricks, accessories, news, you have to check it out because it's going to simplify your life. It's linked up. So is the course. I'll check you guys out in the next video. Later.